stand as you are able for our call to worship. <clears throat> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and, and also, also with you. you. Jesus proclaims, you are the light of the world. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us worship God.
Amen. Great singing this morning. Please be seated. Now that we've been thoroughly woken up, <laughs> let us confess our sins before God and our help in times of trouble. Please join me in our unison prayer of confession. Almighty God, we have asked for your righteous judgment against others, but we have not acknowledged the sin in our own lives. We have worshiped you with our lips, but have dishonored you with our actions. We have prayed for you to end the suffering in our world, yet we have not practiced compassion and generosity toward others. Our religion has become the source of quarreling rather than a testimony to your grace. Forgive our self-righteousness and give us integrity of heart that we may shine forth the light of your salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able for the Gloria Patri. In mercy, God forgives us our sin and grants us genuine repentance through the grace and power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pass the peace of Christ.
like a spring whose waters never fail, God calls us to share what we have received. Let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. Loving God, we give thanks for all you have given us and praise you for your astounding goodness. Receive the dedication of our hearts, minds, and bodies for the ministry of your church. Bless our offering for the work of your kingdom and give us wisdom for the right use of all you have provided through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading today is from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 2, verses 1 to 9. Hear now the word of our Lord. And I, when I came to you, brothers, 
did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling, and my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yet among the, the mature, we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. The word of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Understanding by the power of the Holy Spirit, that as the word is proclaimed, so we may receive holy wisdom to understand the gifts that you have bestowed upon us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our holy gospel for this Sunday is found in the fifth chapter of the gospel according to St. Matthew. So we read. Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to God, to your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. 
the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. <coughs> you recognize him? It's Dumbo, the flying elephant, a favorite childhood story. I hope that most, if not all of you, have heard this wonderful story about an elephant who could fly but didn't know it until Timothy Q. Mouse and some crows convinced him that he could fly. Well, he's flying, loops and spins, and he glides. Dumbo can fly. Now, how many of us haven't wept and thrilled and soared with Dumbo, the cute little persecuted circus elephant with the big ears who discovered that, in fact, he could fly? The story starts with this cute little guy getting, uh, this cute little guy being born to a loving mother named Jumbo. His ears, though, are always getting in the way. He's always being picked on and ridiculed and rejected by the other elephants and laughed at and tormented by the children who come to the circus. The story continues with Dumbo's loving and very protective mother intervening against a bully who was picking on Dumbo. And she ends up being exiled to a jail car in the circus well, enter Timothy Q. Mouse and the crows. They pointed out to Dumbo that indeed he could fly. Of course, the triumphant climax of the story comes when Dumbo learns that indeed he can fly. Instead of falling many stories down into a dubious rescue net of the clowns, Dumbo soars through the air. All along, the little pachyderm with the big ears did have the ability to fly, which he didn't know until he was shown that he could and given a magic feather and a little bit of a shove. Well, he was never the same from that time on, and life was never the same for him. He had the ability all along. He just didn't know it. He had to discover it. And it even took some hurt and pain and persuasion and rejection along the way to discover it, but Dumbo could fly. Now, there are a lot of good Christian people who are like Dumbo. Gift filled with spiritual gifts, natural abilities for serving God and getting on with the wonderful business of making God's dream come true. But somewhere between unconvinced and disbelieving or just plain unaware that they are gifted as God's ambassadors, they sit inert and don't do anything. Well, they just don't know or they won't believe that God wants them to shake and to shine and to show that God wants them to be agents of his, uh, of his uh, Preservation in a world that is disintegrating and decaying, agents of light in a world that's growing dark, and messengers of the right way to live that God plans for all of us. Well, instead of shaking and shining and showing for the Lord, we walk around shyly shirking our holy high calling, afraid of our own shadows. Well, I'm convinced that one of the reasons that Jesus spoke these words in Matthew chapter 5 was to serve the same function as Timothy Mouse did to remind and encourage and tell the disciples that they had it in them to be successful in their missionary enterprise. They had the joy of helping others discover the joy of new life, but they just weren't sure they could do it, kind of like Dumbo. The purpose of Jesus' words was to show the disciples, number one, what they should do, and number two, to help them realize that they could do it. First, they learned that you are called. Way back in the Old Testament, one of my favorite chapters, 
the first chapter of Jeremiah, God says to him, Before I formed you in the womb and before you were born, I consecrated you and I appointed you a prophet to the nations. And Jesus says to his disciples, You didn't choose me. I chose you to go and bear fruit. And then they are not only chosen, they don't have realize that they're chosen, they're encouraged as well. The Holy Spirit is a little bit like Timothy Q. Mouse and the crows. Uh, in Deuteronomy, way back at the beginning of the Bible, the Lord who goes before you, he will be with you, he will not leave you or forsake you. You're not going to be alone, disciples. And then in the Gospel of John, the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour, what you ought to say. The Holy Spirit will bring to you, to your remembrance, all that I have said to you. Well, like the crows and the mouse who convinced Dumbo that he could fly, Jesus here points out the wonderful truth that the disciples have certain gifts, light and salt and righteousness. And by the way, choir, thank you for that lovely rendering of this little light of mine. That was very, very lovely and apropos. Thank you, Director Ryan. Well, <clears throat> the world says you can't do it. Jesus says not only can you, you will. You and I as children of God and disciples of Christ often stand right at the edge of greatness but we're afraid to look down at that net three stories below and wonder what we're going to do. And it takes somebody like the crows and the mouse to give us a little bit of a, a nudge. So we think we're incapable. We know what we're supposed to be involved in God's mission, but we're not even sure what it is. Well, here Jesus tells us not only what it is, but he also tells us that we can do it. He tells us clearly that we are to be involved in the task of bringing the good news of God's love to a hungry and hurting world. They have the flavor of the Holy Spirit, the light of life, and the righteousness that God imparts to them when it looks like when it is lived at its best. Moreover, he tells us, Jesus does these reassuring words that we can do it. We can fly. Well, not really fly, fly. That's for birds and planes and elephants. <laughs> but we can do what God has called us to do. We can shake and we can shine and we can show the Lord's goodness to the world. In fact, there are very capable, we are very capable of doing exactly what ca God calls us to do. Has any of you ever had a boss who said, you need to do this, and you go, I can't. The boss knows it, and you know it, but the boss still wants you to do it. Hmm, impossible. Well, it's the opposite with Jesus. When he commissions the disciples, he tells them they can, and that God has given them the ability. I used to think uh, once upon a time that these verses from Matthew 5 were a bit of a cudgel. They were a great big scolding that if you don't do your job, you'll be fired. Any of you who've ever been in charge of employees know that threats will get you a little bit of cooperation, but not a lot of loyalty. It's more positive reinforcement and honest, sincere praise and affirmation that bring out the best in others. It is recognizing the best in others that brings it out as well. Well, don't, I, let's be honest, don't you think Jesus knew that? I mean, he, 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 was, he didn't just fall off the turnip truck or the asparagus bush. He, he, uh, <clears throat> he knew what was going on. The passage may have an element of urging in it, but it certainly has a big piece of heaven-sent confidence. Notice Jesus did not say in these verses, you should be or you better be the salt of the earth. He did not say you're going down into a deep, dark hole unless you are the light of the world and in terms of righteousness. He did say yours must exceed the Pharisees, 
But have you ever read about the righteousness of the Bible? It is not what the Pharisees practice. It's not an achievement. It's a gift. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. So shake it out. You can fly, Dumbo. Jesus said, you are the light of the world, so let it shine. You can fly, Dumbo. Jesus said, be perfect and show God's best to others. You can fly, Dumbo. What does it mean to shake and shine and show for the Lord, and how do I do it? First, be salt. He says, you are the salt of the earth. Salt has at least two functions, preservation and flavor. Fresh grace, forgiveness, and joy. It does those two things. It flavors and, per and preserves. In saying that you are the salt of the earth, Jesus is saying for us to do both, to flavor and preserve. Salt is, stands in the, in the, in the way of, in, of uh, invading, uh, invading rottenness. Now, it would be easier to st stand here and catalog all the ways that the world is going to, you know, where in a handbasket. Globally, in the country, in the community, in families, even in the Christian church. But it's too easy to become cynical and discouraged at the state of things. Rather, let's use our Christian saltiness to shake a little flavor into this world that has gone stale and insipid with individualism, insidious immorality, and insufferable selfishness. Let's shake things up with the salt of caring and community, decency and morality, generosity and a spirit of giving. I know some people who are like that, and they're a joy to be around. Amen? You know them too, don't you? Maybe you are one of them. Jesus says you can, if you, you can be, and he gives you the ability to be them. So let's shake the salty flavor of fresh grace, the flavor of forgiveness, the flavor of joy. Second, he says, bring light. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine. Light, Jesus said. You've got it. So show it. Don't hide it. The others may see your good works and glorify God. Now, this is not just to strut around with your spiritual flashlight. It's to quietly let your light shine, your light of hope, your light of guidance, your light of confidence in God's will. And you have all noticed, I'm sure, that the darker it gets, the brighter a, a match, a candle, or a flashlight seems. It's no brighter, no less bright, except it looks brighter when there is darkness, unless you hide it. Hide it under a bushel? No. They trained you. Now I'll ask you all. Hide it under a bushel? No. You got it. Good. Well, we live in a society somewhere be where it's impolite and downright offensive to suggest that one's values ought to be held by others. Hmm. It's just not the sensitive thing to do. Is there a bag here? I want to throw up. <laughs> there are no rules anymore. People don't even know what it's like to have standards, and yet Jesus says in the clearest of terms, let your light shine. Elsewhere, he calls himself the light of the world. When he spoke again to the people, John chapter 8, he said, I am the light of the world, and whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So Jesus is not suggesting that we do something on our own, but praise God rather that we turn to him and let him be the one who shines through us. Let your light shine so that others may see your good works. It illumines the task. It uncovers problems and opportunities. And Jesus says to look, look to me and I will show you the way. Look to me and you will see life at its best. Let your light shine so that others may see your good works. 
They stand for something. They are forgiving. They are generous, these people who shine with the light of Christ. They are generous. They are filled with joy. They are examples. They live by the principles which become the third word of Christ's encouragement. They show righteousness. Unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees, Jesus says. And here's the good news. Righteousness is a gift, not an earned commodity. It is God's gift to you, not something that you have to measure up to. He says you will become righteous. You are to be an example of what righteousness looks like. Righteousness in the sense of God's word, not of the Pharisees. The Pharisees had 567 rules that they had to obey. That's not the way it is for us. We've got rules, we've got standards, but living up to his standards is his gift by the power of the Holy Spirit working in and through his word. So we are invited to live it ourselves, not so much by consciously setting an, an example, but by simply, simply letting God shape us. There's a lovely hymn, you are the potter, I am the clay, letting him reshape us. Yeah, your righteousness must exceed that of the Pharisees, which is not very difficult when you think about it, because they were so full of themselves. Um, I can't remember, what was the saying? A man, a man who's full of himself is not a very pretty picture. Anyway, uh, your righteousness must exceed that of the Pharisees, but it doesn't mean that you've got to play a little better than you brownie point kind of a game. It does mean that God will, it, you, you allow God to give you his righteousness and the joy in the new life. There's not a hint of self-righteousness here. No condescension in those who found the way and walked in it. The most, some of the most righteous people I know are also the most humble. They've allowed God to come in and take charge. Oh, sometimes that's uncomfortable. Because <laughs> I like being in charge, Lord, if it's all the same to you. And then he gets my attention in one way or another. I trip or I stumble or I fall or I mess up. And I go, oh, I forgot, Lord. Never happens to anybody else in here, does it? No. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so we, uh, we, we live this righteousness as God reshapes and remold us. We're just doing the job that God has given us. We can fly. God put it in us. They've discovered, these people, the ability to be salt and light and to have developed the gifts now that they are put to put them to use. A couple of hints on how that can happen. First, you spend time with him. A disciple in the classic Bible definition of a disciple is a learner, a follower of Christ who learns the doctrines of scriptures and the lifestyle they require. In the book of Acts, chapter 4, it says, Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they recognized that they had been with Jesus. I think I've printed it in your outline. You have a little bit, bef a little bit up, further up in the outline. I quoted it in the Gospel, I think, of John. It says, The, whole, the Spirit will bring to your remembrance the things that I've told you. Now, here's the trick. How are you going to remember it <clears throat> unless you learned it in the first place? You've heard the saying, G-I-G-O, garbage in, garbage out. I repurpose that saying, gospel in, gospel out. You got to get it into your head and then into your heart, dear ones. And that's the... And that's the pot, that's the stew pot where the spirit works, where he gets active and he works and you go, ah, I know what God's word says. Bingo. There, you can even say, the Lord told me. And you don't have to sound like a TV evangelist either. The Lord said unto me, yeah. No, you just say, the Lord told me. The Lord told me. I know some people who were 
pretty good at saying the Lord told me. My mother was one of them. I'm, how long do I have here? I'm, I'm, who said that? <laughs> she recruited people to serve in the church, and she would say, the Lord gave me your name. <laughs> you did not say no to Hortense Storvik, no. Uh, anyway, yeah, see, the, I mean, the Lord will speak if we listen. And I know people who talk to God and God listens and they listen and God speaks to them. What a gift. You spend time with them. They had been with Jesus. Worship, Christian community, Christian service, reading the word, memorizing the word. They had been with Jesus. Second thing, they follow his example. He says in John 13, I've set you an example that you should do as I have done. And St. Paul got the hint to the first Corinthians. He said, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. And third, it's, no, it's a no-brainer. Obey him. Do it. Do as he asks. If you keep my commandments, John 14, I will, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Like Timothy Q. Mouse in Dumbo, Jesus knows that we can do it because he himself has given us not only the command, but the ability as, as well. You are the salt of the earth, so shake it out. You are the light of the world, so shine it. You are the righteousness of God, so show it. Like Dumbo on that high platform, We may be a bit scared. He wasn't quite ready to jump the first time when he was pushed. And sometimes we get pushed too. The urging of a friend, a crisis, a difficult situation, an opportunity may prompt us to say that, that, that um, we can be, we need to be the salt that, it, that that stands against invading rottenness. We may need to, be, to stand up and be the light and let it shine and to show righteousness is God's best for all of us. Well, the thing that I like about this passage, aside from the direction and purpose that it gives, is it, it is the way that Jesus puts these words. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You are the righteousness of God. Well, Dumbo never looked back after he learned to fly and everything was different. What would it be like here if each of us said, Lord, I'll be salt. Lord, make me light. Lord, I'm going to listen to you and show what it's like to be one of yours. And then we said, ain't looking back. I'm going to do it for you, Lord, and for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. This is the Lord's table, and all who seek God through the Lord Jesus Christ are welcome to partake in the gifts found here. Please join as we sing the communion hymn number 405.
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, in mercy for our fallen world. You gave your only Son that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts that we may receive our Lord with living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. Amen. Come, Amen. Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Christ until he comes. Thanks be to God for these gracious gifts. And so we pray, Almighty God, the testimony of those who know your love, through their testimony, you have guided us to ask for what we need. Our Lord Jesus called his disciples to live as a city on a hill and a lamp on a stand, that all may see the glory of God. We pray for the church, the community of disciples, and we ask, grant that we who claim the name of Christ may shine as light into the, our dark world. Our brother Paul led the church not by lofty words of human wisdom, but by wisdom born of your spirit. We pray for those who serve the church. Let pastors and teachers and those who minister in the name of Christ Forsake worldly knowledge that perishes and be led by your truth. Blessed are those who honor your commandments, O Lord. We pray for the world, for the governments, and for its leaders. May all who rule honor justice and compassion and serve the common good that the people may flourish. You teach us to offer food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted. We pray for the sick, the hungry, the poor, the homeless, and those who are oppressed. Let your church minister to those who are in distress and bear witness to your abiding compassion for all who suffer. We remember in particular Katie, Brea, Ben and Stacy, Judy and Shannon, J.R. and his family, Elizabeth, Bill, Missy, Lorelei, Paul, Joey, Sam, Roland, Bill, Jana, Nancy, Debbie, Lois, Emerson, Sedalia, Ed, Shirley, Ken, Chusri, Joe and Debbie, Gail and her family, Pastor Jason's family, Tom and my wife Louise. To you, O oh God, we pray through Christ, with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. And now in the confidence of the people of God, let us sing together the prayer that Jesus taught us.
Jesus said, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. May Christ, the true light, shine upon you that you may walk in righteousness all your days. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs>